at a high school where the students are literally divided into predators and prey, friendships maintain the fragile peace. Who among them will become a beast star, a hero destined to lead in a society naturally rife with mistrust? Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube, and this time we're going to be talking manga. Yes, we're talking Beastars Volume 1. This is one of my most anticipated reads of 2019, one of the best reads of 2019 that you'll have, or if you're seeing this in the future, whatever year you might be on. <laughs> so yeah, Beastars Volume 1. I got into this because of the anime adaptation. I'm going to be completely frank with you guys. I had no intention of picking up this book, but I was curious enough to check out the anime. I watched the first episode and I was hooked. One of the best opening songs ever and the animation, I was already there. I was a little bit iffy on the uh, CG anime because I'm not a huge fan of that, but it won me over. It looks fantastic, but we're not talking about the anime, we're talking about the manga, right? So a couple episodes in, I'm like, damn, I really need to get the manga of Beastars because it just started coming out over here in the US, so I wanted to jump on that before any books go out of print, all that crazy nonsense. So I got volume one, and as of this video, I have uh, the first two here. Uh, yeah, Viz, come on. I mean, these are signature editions. They're taller than uh, your regular manga, but can't, I mean, uh, put them out at a faster rate, please. I mean, Japan already has like 15 plus volumes. Let's try and do catch up. We're already on volume three. Uh, let's pick up the pace. Anyways, Beastars. What the heck is Beastars? I've been rambling. Beastars is a pretty interesting title. In a nutshell, this is an alternate reality. There are no humans. Every creature here is, you know, anthropomorphic animals going about their business. And, you know, they're divided in classes, omnivores, herbivores, carnivores, all that fun stuff. And they live in this society where eating, uh, like the carnivores eating other species is strictly forbidden. They coexist, and there's this frail tension throughout the book that at any point in time, things could snap. Yes, it is a perfect society, if you will, but as you keep reading, you find out about its underbelly and how, how nervous every character is in this book. I found that really interesting, and it reminded me of real-world issues and how frail of a society we live in that the tiniest spark can match a giant forest of trouble. And in Beastars, we get that spark, that match, that initial fire at the Cheriton Academy, where students, uh, you know, even though they have their cliques, you see all the mice hanging around together, you see all the uh, canines, you know, the dogs and jackals and wolves and all that stuff, uh, hanging around on a separate clique, they're meant to inhabit the same space. And we follow a series of protagonists throughout the story. The first one being Legosi. And I think I said that right, even though it's spelled with an H-I at the end. <laughs> I do know uh, that it is inspired in Italian. So, Legosi? I don't know. Maybe I'm saying it wrong. But... Uh, we follow our main wolf, which you see here on the cover, and on this back cover as well. I, I really like that drawing. And uh, he is pretty huge. Wolves are pretty damn big if you've seen one in real life. Not that I've seen one in real life, but, you know, pictures and videos and all that stuff. And he is sort of this gentle giant. He is part of the drama club as part of the uh, technical staff and all that stuff. And he is just the sweetest boy. Uh, I think he's 16 or 17 or something like that. And he is just minding his business when all of a sudden there is this murder on campus where a carnivore has eaten a, uh, one of the herbivores. I, it was an alpaca. 
called Temp. And already suspicion and paranoia creeps into the faculty and the students and all that stuff. So you see characters looking at a big wolf like Legacy and they're accusing him of maybe he might have done it because he's a wolf. Uh, and, you know, you get this wonderful critique of uh, racism and social class and stereotypes and all these uh, elements that plague our society today and they've always done uh, done so in the past but now especially in today's time it's you know the climate is there for that social injustice all these accusations get thrown around and the characters are put through uh, the ringer because of just how they look and the character our main wolf he is reserved, shy, timid, but at the same time, he's very, he's, he's a strong, he's a strong, he's physically strong and has a very genuine heart to the way he uh, expresses himself. Even though he's shy, he is, he's a gentle soul. And I, I cannot recommend this series enough. Not only do you get a really cool examination of social cliques, but with the traits of the animal kingdom and the way characters behave like uh, a cat or a dog or a rabbit or a deer and all these other wonderful uh, species, it really is a giant metaphor for the human condition and how we behave in a society with other people, our paranoia and how a mass hysteria can set in when something like this happens, when in real life you get a hate crime or a genocide or stuff like that and our preconceived notions can be our downfall when it comes to interacting and socializing with people and how uh, and how the uh, globalization effect has evolved through time right now I'm speaking to you you might be anywhere across the world and you might be looking at this video so that in and of itself speaks volumes of how uh, we have evolved as a species that we can communicate through technology and I do like that Beastars reminds me of that even though uh, you know at first you you look at their outfits and it, it looks very um, 50s, 60s oriented. I thought it was going to be like a period piece, but it's actually modern because they use cell phones and all that stuff. So that was interesting. Uh, also, one of the cooler aspects of this series definitely has to be the artwork. This is done by Paru Itagaki, and she is fantastic. The mangaka just does a really cool job with the artwork. And what I love about it is that if I showed you this, you would not think this is a manga. You would say, oh, this is like an indie comic in black and white. Like this reminds me of Black Sad or a comic book like that with animals. And it has that European sketchy uh, drawing aesthetic to it. Like uh, for example, right here, it just looks straight out of a European comic to me. And uh, I think that lends itself for the title to get a bigger appeal worldwide. I get it, not everybody's gonna be excited to pick up a manga, but they see something like this and it might pique their curiosity. Uh, I like in the story that we follow Legacy. I mean, he look at that sweet wolf. <laughs> He's such a good boy. <laughs> um, we follow all these animals in the theater club and they're putting on this play and you get, um, you know, you follow them as they have to deal with the murder of one of their uh, classmates and how <clears throat> how do they grieve and how do they proceed from there. All these interesting notions, all these interesting uh, philosophical, ethical questions are asked in this book. You also have the introduction of one of the series' best characters. This is uh, Louis, uh, the deer. He is aiming to be a B-star. If you're wondering what the heck is a B-star, I, I read it from the uh, description at the beginning of the video. Basically, like the all-star uh, summa cum laude character uh, at the school that later on goes on to acquire top positions at the government, stuff like that. So an honorary student that embodies the spirit of the academy and is an example for all the other animals to follow. 
Louis is extremely methodical, interesting, uh, Machiavellian, and just wonderfully written, and his interactions and how powerful he is, even though he isn't as strong as Legacy or other characters like, like that, uh, how powerful he is, and how, you know, he is sort of like the hot boy that everybody looks up to. All the girls love him, all the guys want to be like him, and he is a red deer species and you know you would think he would be a calm soothing presence but he has that over the top regal performance to him you know which i thought was really freaking fascinating and uh last but not least you have uh haru the white dwarf rabbit which uh you can see over here she uh you know some things happen in the book i'm not gonna spoil it she gets into a gossip rumor throughout the whole school, and she gets bullied a lot, and it leads to a faithful encounter with this guy right here in a fantastic, beautiful sequence of events that uh, the anime did a wonderful job as well. And um, it sort of brings out some desires on certain characters and you have that morality dilemma of whether a carnivore can stay put as he is because these characters like they go to the cafeteria and they eat soy products and bread eggs stuff like that so he can keep these characters can keep their composure i don't want to ruin it but i think you know where i might be headed if you have no idea about this series so yeah do check it out for the uh social criticism the wonderful artwork european style uh just really deluxe gorgeous looking books that i highly recommend and easily one of the best releases of 2019 beastars is an excellent series and you're right on time to start collecting if you're watching this and you're interested there's only like three volumes at the as of this video go ahead and pick it up you will thoroughly enjoy it in my honest opinion. Have you read Beastars? If you have, let me know down below which is your favorite character. I know my favorite character right here. Um, I tend to do videos like this that are spoiler free because I don't like spoilers when I look at reviews for stuff or discussions or opinion pieces. So uh, eventually I do want to do like a spoiler heavy uh, take on the series, but I just wanted to keep it brief. You know, just in case you're new, you're watching this channel for the first time, you don't know who I am. Yeah, I just like doing spoiler-free takes on stuff I'm reading, playing, and watching, and all that stuff. So, if you have read it, let me know in the comments section down below. Guys, thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, following me on uh, your favorite social media platform. You can talk to me there, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And, as always... I have got more stuff to read and review for you guys, so I will catch all of you on our next episode.